Okay, welcome guys. Uh, all right, John wanted a, me to do a little video on paintbrushes. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that do a lot of better job, that do a better job than I do, uh, like Squigma, Squigma, Midwinter Minis, um, The Witch. Uh, they all do fantastic stuff. Um, but I'll give you a little a bit on what I've done. Now, these gray brushes right here, I picked up at Michael's Craft Store because they were cheap, but they're mostly synthetic and they look really nice. However, in application, they're not really that good. Um, they just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not too enthusiastic. I'm, I'm, I'm not too enthusiastic about these. Uh, I did pick them at Michael's. They're generic, and they they suck. Putting it mildly, don't bother. Uh, if you're going to do, if you're going to do painting, and you you got to watch out for these here too. These are the, you, usually the kits. You know, you got painting kits that come with it, and you get these brushes with the painting kits. And uh, this brush right here. It is good for dry brushing same with these right here and I don't throw the brushes away I keep them so even though I say these brushes are no good I actually keep them because you can use them for dry brushing like these cheap synthetic they're actually not bad for dry brushing so when you get that that wide base they're actually good for dry brushing and I've got three different sizes so I use those for dry brushing. Um, actually, all of these. So I have two cans that I keep my paintbrushes separated. And I always keep my paintbrushes up. I never leave them in the water down. Um, that, that will ruin your brushes. So if, if you're keeping your like that... It ruins your brushes and always use cold water because warm water disable the hairs within the brush are actually there's glue down there there's wax and what ends up happening is when you use warm water it dissolves that wax that glue that holds them together so then your bristles start falling out so always store your paint brushes up facing up never use warm water always use cool water or room temperature water. I leave my I leave my water in jugs like this, or in spaghetti jars like that. So when I need to refresh my can, I just empty that and I fill it up with this tap water that's been sitting at my painting desk. So that being said, some of my favorite brushes are these right here and these I go to the hobby store and I pick them out and these right here are the Atlas and they come in all different sizes you want to use your thicker brushes here for large areas like if you're painting uh, armor you paint tanks you paint trucks uh, you paint houses somewhere where you need to get a wide uh, spread of paint on your figures you can also use these as foundation paint brushes as well so you're doing your your main color on your figure you can you can use these brushes to just cover the entire figure with your foundation paint so the, the three brushes I use so you need you need a you need a wide brush for foundation then you need a medium brush similar to these to do wide areas but not not as not the whole figure but maybe the pauldrons if they're going to be different the the helmet something like that you want to use a medium brush very much like this you can tell these have been used quite a bit because they're folding over but these are still got life in them and then you want several detail brushes so there's three types of brushes that you want to use you want to use your thick brushes for 
your foundation paint. So you use your thick. And then you want to use medium for kind of big details. And then you want to slide into your smaller high point brushes. And these are usually like zero, zero, zero. This is a this is a, a three slash zero. This one here, I've chewed up a bit. More than likely, that that looks like a, a one maybe. It could be a zero, but it could be a one too. Here we go. Um, here's an atlas that I like. Um, this is a one. And there was another one in here. Here, here we go. And here is an Atlas Zero. And Atlas, uh, Atlases are probably my go-to brush. They're not top of the line. Like, um, what do we got in here? We have, um, these are the uh, Master's Touch right here for, for detailing work. Right? So this is the Master's Touch. They're expensive brushes. They're, they're like five, six dollars each. Um, what else we got? Uh, we got what are these? These are um, what are these? Are these humble? No, these are low Cornell. These are pretty cheap, and as you can see, the bristles are kind of. So I use that for um, for dry brushing, smaller areas. I never throw a brush away. I've had these brushes for years. And they look like crap, but they're excellent in dry brushing. So never throw your brushes away. Even if even if you've you bought shit brushes, keep them. Uh, like these. These look really cool. I, I just wanted to try these out. These are Maestra. And uh, the, this is a good dry brushing. And I use this one for gluing. For doing um, basing. For using the uh, Gorilla Glue or Elmer's Glue. So all, all your, your water-based glues for basing, I use these. So I'll, I'll spread the, I'll spread the uh, basing material around and then I'll dump it into the flock. But they're always a use for old brushes and some brushes that are not good. But that's what I use these for. So I use these for basing. And these are pretty cheap. Then we get into... Um, these tested tester brushes here I use my drills to separate everything so then it's these are these are pretty cheap you know testers they've been around for a while but their brushes aren't aren't very oh, how'd the atlas get in there see I like the atlas look at the difference between between tester and the atlas can you see uh, all right. not really can't really see that can you now it's probably one of, I probably haven't even used this. That's why it looks so good. But I'm always using my Atlas. But here, look at my, te look at this tester that I've used. Look at what happened to her. She is just awful. And, uh, but I don't throw it away because guess what? This is a great detail dry brush. I haven't even used this one. Uh, but you can use this. This is, originally, this is a dry brush. Those flat surfaces like that are dry brushes when you get the pointy ones these are your detail brushes so the flat flat back is your dry brush your pointies are your detailing the next ones we have uh army painter brushes which i use quite a bit um i do like the ergonomic uh, the way they're held. So if you have an issue, like sometimes when I'm painting with with the rounds, I have I have a problem with my fingers going numb, and it's due to some old uh, military injuries. So once in a while, my my finger will go numb because I'm holding the brush. But these ergo ergonomic brushes here from Army Painter, I like them. The points are good. I think they're I think they're a quality brush. They've gotten better. Uh, I love this little detail brush right here. I mean, they all they come in all different shapes and sizes, but you will have your sizes on these things. Look, this one says 
this is the detail brush. Uh, usually they have the. <clears throat> what do we got here? We got. It doesn't say. I've, I've used them so much I've worn a. There's a detail brush here. So those are the three types of brushes. This brush here is a regiment brush, whatever that means. But it's a, it's a medium sized brush that will take care of medium sized areas. And here you have a here you have a um, army paint up for base coating, which I think honestly this one's too small for base coating, unless it's, unless it's you're doing fifteen millimeters or something like that. But this is this is kind of a a next uh, this is this would be a medium a medium detailing brush. And then of course you got your, your tiny details. And let's see, this one they say is a regiment brush, whatever that means. And we've got character brush. Okay, it's, that doesn't help you. you. Call it regiment character. This is a detail brush. This is a fine detail brush. So that's what you're looking for. Um, you, you want and don't throw them away. These these are all detail brushes, and you can see some of them get frayed, but don't throw them away because you can always use them. I'm glad you asked me because I, that that meant I had to go through my uh, I had to go through my paint brushes and and pick out what's good, what's bad, because <clears throat> I have a bad habit of um, just waiting <clears throat> and buying more paint brushes. And you'll find you you'll find that you'll have a favorite brush that you go to all the time, and you basically wear it out, like these right here. I, I really like these. Um, these are all right for doing really, really tiny, tiny details, and uh, but these are so old now that I can't use them anymore. You can see how how they're frayed, but these you just put a little bit of paint on the tip here, and so you can do the little jewels on the uh, Space Marines or something like this right here, you know, so, something, some minute detail like that or something, you know, so, but these, these are, those are pretty tough, and I think what I need to do is change cans and, and put my, my used brushes there and my good brushes there. Um, so Army Painter, is my go-to, my Atlas, our go-to, and these guys right here, the testers, these are expensive right here, and these are pretty cheap, and then last but not least, we have, well, no, not last, but we have, we got Humbrol, we have dollar and these now this one here I, I I bought this dollar and it's so long that I I honestly can't use it. It's just it's just I don't know, it's just too weak. But I'll figure out a use for it. But the idea and hit look here's here's another one right here. Very long, right? And those will go in here because the bristles are worn. But these will go in here. And then um, then we have our Games Workshop. Our Games Workshop. The, the, what I do like about Citadel and Games Workshop is they are a hobby. If they weren't so expensive. But they are a hobby that's geared to the beginner. And what I like what they do is. Here you got. This is a base. This is a base brush right here. Right, and they actually have it written base, so you know. So if I was gonna if I was gonna start out, now here's a shading brush, right? This is a medium coverage brush. This I'm gonna I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm gonna assume it's a dry brush. Yep. Okay, dry brush. And how did I know that? Because it's flat. Look at how flat it is. It's very stiff, but. It's good for tanks and just dabbing and, and doing what you need to do. So, there's your brushes. So, you need three brushes. The three brushes you need are a dry brush. 
you need a foundation brush. And a nice detail brush. Those are your three basics. So once you have those three, once you have those three brushes, you start falling in the in the in between them what you want. So you, you want to go down a little bit or you want to go up a little bit. You want to go up, you want to go down, you want to go up, you want to go down. So on your dry brushing. Your basing and your detailing. Those are your three brushes. Um, <clears throat> and go to the hobby store and, and talk talk to your hobbyist. And, and I'm talking about a model shop. I'm talking about where you buy models and paints. Most of the guys there, they, they will be, you know, making models, painting models, and they'll know. And don't throw your stuff out. I've had these things for years. And they are awesome. I like sable hair over synthetic hair. Sable is always better. It's just how I feel about it. And I think, I hope I answered a lot of your questions. So I don't throw anything away. And that will be it for <laughs> a little excursion into um, paintbrushes. So be good to each other. Take care. John, I hope this helps you out. And I will catch you later. Ciao.